And good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Pagel Center. Big hockey game here tonight as Minnetonka and Edina clash. And anytime in Minnetonka and Edina clash, it's a big game. This is a Pee Wee level. Great game coming up. Our uh, analyst tonight, Eric Johnson, um, tell me what you know about either one of these teams. Well, I know that, it, uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here, Marty. Thanks for the intro. Uh, excited to be a part of it. Uh, these teams are big rival as Minnetonka and Edina always are. Uh, there's four PVB2 teams at Edina, there's two PVB2 teams at Minnetonka, and the Taka Blue team is 1-1-1 one, one, and one against the Edina team so far. So I believe that this game is for a lead in District 6, and uh, both teams are fired up to play tonight. Should be a great hockey game, and look forward to calling it for you tonight. And we are all set to go. Easy. Edina starts off bringing it into the Minnetonka zone. That is Dress, the defenseman, Minnetonka breaking out on the left wing. It's Moin. Loose puck out in front of the net. And it's knocked away. The Dynamo will try to clear the zone. Back into the skipper's end of the ice. And Folks, I apologize. I'm trying to catch up to all these numbers. They're little guys with little numbers. Minnetonka back in the zone with Woodley. The man beast. He's pretty much. Man child. I know. Set it out in front just wide. Woodley with a centering pass out to Kennedy and just missed on that one. Good energy Still in this game so far. It's a very fast pace. Yeah. Puck comes back in the Tonka zone. Over on the side for Russell on the right wing across the blue line. Picked off by Edina. They'll circle back in their own net. Molman with the puck. Molman skates out in front of his own net. Brings it over for Torsky. They're still trying to get it out of the zone. Edina bring it out on the wing. Boom with the puck. Skates into the right wing, back in the right corner, behind the net. And his centering pass is intercepted by Minnetonka. Here comes Kennedy on the right wing. Dinah clears his own out to center. Shot on goal, saved by Palmer. Centering pass is cleared away. Still in the Tonka zone. Tipped in by Gress. Back in the left corner. Warren for the skippers. Centering pass out in front and Tonka gets control of it, clearing it out of the zone. And back out to center ice. The Dine is Oschlager with the puck. Takes a shot from the point. Hits a defenseman, knocked down. They tie up along the near boards. Collins with a shot to flex off a player out in front, just goes wide to the right. Collier behind the net, trying to clear the zone for the skippers. Centering pass and a save by Palmer, and he ices the puck. And we'll have our first whistle. Well, it's a great start, Marty. You know, both teams are going back and forth. Edina's had the momentum in the last 30 seconds or so, but but uh, Minnetonka's done a good job keeping the shots from outside the scoring area, and Max Palmer trying to get a whistle for his team and a change. Yeah, off the face off, comes out in the neutral zone, still in the uh, Tonka zone as they try to clear and do so. Back in the Edina zone, skating back there for Lovell, number 21. Brings it out to the point, Crawford keeps it in, brings it around the board behind the net. A lot of jostling along the far boards, and Edina breaks it out of the zone. Kellenberger with it. Brings it around the boards, comes all the way out to the point, and comes out to center ice, where Edina will regroup with favor. Drops it off for Brayman. Brayman shoots it on goal, and Palmer makes a save, and we'll do it all over again. Face off in the Tonka zone. 
you know, these these teams haven't played each other here. The Adina Green team and the, the Tonka Blue, uh, we're in that phase of trying to figure out what the other team's like and what the pace is going to be, and, and so far it's uh, living up to the billing. Off the face up, Minnetonka controls along the near boards in the Minnetonka zone. A scrum out in front and still trying to get control. Comes over to Marvin, his shot saved by Palmer as he steers it off to the left side. Back behind the Minnetonka goal. Still no score here in the first period. He died at against Minnetonka. Long clearing class is cut off by Dine at the post at the blue line. Brought back in, back behind the net. Woodley with it. And puck slides off just to the left of the goal. Back out of the point. Shot from there to flex off a couple of skates. Woodley skates over to pick up the puck in the corner. Tries to clear the zone, and Edina keeps it back in. And here comes a break for Edina. Shot on goal, and Palmer with another nifty save. Big save uh, for Palmer there from Minnetonka. Edina's putting a lot of pressure on and moving the puck well uh, from low to high, and the defensemen are getting the puck through back to the net. And Palmer is just right now anchoring his team. Edina out shooting Taka 4-0 in the first five minutes. Another shot off the faceoff. It rolls in, and Palmer scoops that up and holds on for another faceoff. Well, now, Eric, now you being a uh, the, the girls hockey coach, but it's at the varsity level. But as far as districts go and all the tournaments that the, the kids play, right now the records we've got Minnetonka at 7-2-2 two, two district play and Edina at 10-3. and three. How do they factor in who goes into the playoffs? Because it's no, not really a playoffs, conference like it is in yeah, school. But the, the playoffs are uh, district level playoffs, so they do a seeding process. And so they do it based on record and points, uh, wins, losses, uh, and ties. And there are also fair play points. So the team that stays out of the penalty box um, a reasonable amount of time ends up keeping more of their fair play points. Really? And so if you, get, if you get three or more penalties in a, in a game, you can lose fair play points. And so that factors in as well. And these both these teams are fighting for the first seed in the District 6 playoffs, which start in mid-February. And how many teams from each district goes on? Well, at, at this level, the district tournament is 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 it? it it's the prize. No okay. win the district tournament. Okay. Talking to Edina net, uh, behind the net. That's Collier for Edina. Edina trying to break it out of the zone, and looks like the, the net has come loose. The Edina goalie has good size. He's moving back and forth and uh, accidentally pushed the net off its moorings. This offensive zone faceoff might prove to be the first time Minnetonka can sustain some pressure in the offensive zone. Got some big kids on this on the ice and some really small kids. Uh, Particularly Minnetonka, Levi Roach. Coach says he's four foot nine, weighs <laughs> 76 pounds. He ate more food than that. On the other end of that spectrum, Jackson Woodley on the team. Yeah, right here he's 6'1, 170 pounds. He's like, <laughs> Could have it. Could have Levi for lunch. <laughs> He'll still be hungry. Back in the Edina zone as they try to clear it out. Kept uh, intercepted by Woodley. As Tonka brings it out and it's cleared back out to center ice. And we've got an offside call. Minnetonka <laughs> fired up some energy off that faceoff. The the line with Kennedy and Larson and Russell digging down down low. Didn't get credit for a shot on goal, but but we're buzzing the tower around the net there. We'll see if Minnetonka can turn some momentum on. Russell, Larson, and Kennedy out for Minnetonka on this forward line. Warren and Woodley on defense. Buck rolls back behind the Edina net. Cleared up along the board. Brandon Attic still kept in by Warren. Logan Warren's born in Edina. And I know. <laughs> makes him want to, I think, play Probably. against the beat Edina that much more. He's got a. He's got a strong wish to win this hockey game. Oh yeah. I don't blame him, even though I'm from Edina. <laughs> Back on the Edina zone, picked up there by Lefebvre. Skates out as both teams are changing. Crosses the blue line into the Minnetonka zone along the left corner. Ridden into the boards by Warren, lost the puck. Warren with it. 
Tries to center on a pass. A big save by Palmer on a close-in shot by the Hornets. And here comes going to talk on a break. Shot and a save by Jones. Great scoring chance by Le Levi Roach. It was a clearing play. Logan Warren fired the puck off the far side boards. And number eight, Levi Roach came in in a breakaway. He's one of the fastest players in the Minnetonka team. Tried to shoot at five hole, and the goalie was able to make the stop. I'm trying to figure out who he was, but he's so small. I just <laughs> he's so fast, it was hard to find his number. That's it's Levi. He's like a little blur. Levi can fly. Uh, mix up behind the net as uh, they try to break out of the zone. Minnetonka trying to create some offensive opportunities here with 425 left to go here in the first period. No score on the hockey game so far. Buck rolls all the way back in the Edina zone, or the Minnetonka zone with Crawford. He tries to clear it out, kept in there by Collier. Minnetonka controls along the near boards. Benedict with it. Gets it into the Hornet zone. And they'll change up a few of their players. Brings it along the far board, step into the point. Scrum, and we got a possible chance for Edina, but broken up by Crawford. Edina breaks out at center ice. And they're going to go back and regroup, but here comes uh, Minnetonka. Criswell with the puck. Centered out front just off the stick. A good opportunity there. Buck will bring out to center ice. Edina breaks out, comes across the blue line. Stick handles through, and it's picked off by Minnetonka. It's a pretty open game so far. Stick handling into the Edina zone. That was number 15, Kippers. Who's favorite player is Connor McDavid. Don't blame him on that. Edina controlling out at center ice. Both teams trying to change. Mullman carried it into the left corner. Along there with Lovell. Centered out in front, knocked away by Tonka. Lovell has it, keeps it in the zone, stuffs it back into the left corner. And I don't know if we got a hooking penalty or... Not even sure. My guess is it's gonna be an interference call against Minnetonka. We do want to say hello uh, it was, to... It uh, was a hooking penalty. We do want to say hello to uh, Chris Brown from Minnetonka, who's out tonight, as we decided to call it an upper body sickness. Yeah, the, the skippers are missing Brownie tonight. You know, the other players in the team are going to try to pick it up for him and, and play everybody play that much stronger to try to replace, but he's, a, he's a, not a replaceable player here for us, but we're going to do our best tonight. Still in the talk to zone, they try to clear the zone, kept in by the fever, and then he finally brought out the center ice. It's not fair when a, when, a, when a player tucks his jersey into his fence and he's so small, you, you can only see half his number. Edina brings it up the center ice, put there by Oschlager. The fever has it, number 10. Ring light pass across. Milky sends it in. They tie up behind the net. Back out to Lefevre at the left point. Back in the corner. Takes a shot. Blocked there by a rope. I believe that's Kennedy. Shot on goal. Another save by Palmer. He's been a busy goaltender. A loose puck out in front. And it's cleared aside. Tonka trying to Stave off a little uh, offensive power by Edina and finally get a whistle. With, uh, 130 left to go here in the first period. It's a strong power play that Edina has, Marty. They had the sustained pressure, and Max Palmer made multiple <coughs> green A saves in front of his net. Uh, got the poke check and the leg kick involved, and Minnetonka is going to have to try to get through the period here and then retool in between the first and second. Edina control, they are on the power play. Kept in the zone by Witzke. Takes a shot, and we might have an uh, injured player. I'm not sure where he caught that one. Well, whistle blows, and we'll have to check on the, uh, which injured player that is. Number eight, Levi Roach. Took one for the team. 
got his body in front of that shot and took it somewhere right up around the rib cage. And hopefully he just uh, has the wind knocked out of him and not any more serious injury than that. So while we have a moment, uh, how's your team doing? Our team is uh, having a good season. We are uh, 11, 7, and 3. Levi's up now and he's moving around, so that's great news for the skippers. And uh, we've got three games left in the late conference and, and two non-conference games, and then playoffs start after that. So we've got Section 2 AA uh, in playoffs with Eden Prairie and Chasta Chan and Chocopee and Holy Family. So we've got some stiff competition here coming up in playoffs. We're looking forward. It's, that means it's a sign of spring when it's tournament time. It is, you know, it's uh, it's amazing how fast the high school season goes when we start in early November and we're, you know, girls are done by late February and it's, you know, it starts about a month or so later than youth hockey and it, and it ends about a month earlier. So it's a short season when you got to fit it in between fall sports and spring sports. Back to the action, 45 seconds left to go. A couple of seconds left on the power play for Edina. Back in the left corner. Centering pass goes through a maze of players and into the right corner. Still no score here in the first period. Edina against Minnetonka. And we might have penalty number two. It's, it's at the old marble theory. Pull it's, it out of one pocket, put it, it might, in the other. It might be the marble theory. Uh, the refs might have been feeling bad for Matanka and wanted to put them on the power play, but Evan Kippers was breaking out of the zone, and I think he had a step on the Adina player that hooked him. So we'll see what kind of power play Minnetonka can muster up after a strong effort by the Hornets. Just uh, here over 30 seconds left in the first period. Still no score. Minnetonka on the power play for the remainder of the period, unless they score. They tie up outside the Tonka blue line. Out at center ice, it's Boyum. Gets it across ice, they knock it into the zone. That's Kippers. Kippers to the left of the goal. Shot, saved by Jones. Dana controls, 10 seconds left in the period. Another firing attempt as the buzzer sounds. That goes to the uh, end of the first period, no score. Pretty evenly matched game. Uh, Figuring both teams have not really played each other this year. I know they scrimmaged early in the year, uh, but a lot of things can change in the early part of the season. Uh, not much to report after one uh, period of play. Dina and Minnetonka are tied at 0-0. Each team has uh, had a power play. Uh, Minnetonka will have another minute to go on their power play to start the second period, but pretty evenly matched game so far. It has been. I mean, the first period, the advantage will go to Edina, and they outshot Minnetonka. It says on the board 8-2. It looked to me like it was 8-3, 8-4, but, but I guess I'm, I may be a little yeah, bit who's biased. Counting? Yeah. Who's counting? <laughs> but Edina did have the, uh, more of the play in Minnetonka zone. Uh, Minnetonka has been a resilient team all year. They've been in three state, they've been in three championship games in their tournaments. They won a tournament in the Spring Lake Park earlier this season. And uh, they're the kind of team that kind of hangs around and finds a way to play better as the game goes on. So I'd expect a better effort out of the Taka team. They're going to need it, uh, especially in the first minute 30 of this period with the power play. All ready to go here for period number two. Minnetonka will start the period with a minute and a half left to go on the power play. Chris Wall is knocked down along the boards in the Indiana zone. Chris Wall out there with Boyne and Kippers. Back on defense is Huddle and Crawford. Manning the points during this power play. Dinah breaks out. They're coming up on shorthanded. Molman with the puck. Crawford in the corner. Tying up there with Huddle. Comes right out in front, turn pass, and uh, partially fanned on that was Molman. Minnetonka still on the power play for another 35 seconds or so. Long pass. Back into the Edina zone. Edina will keep control of it, try to clear the zone on this power play. Tuttle keeps it in. Over to Kippers in the left corner. Centering pass, knocked away by the goaltender Jones. Kept in. Shot from a bad angle, but still a good save by Jones. Gonna talk on the power play for just a couple more seconds.
Lovell with the puck, tries to center it, knocked away by the Dyna defense. They tie up behind the net. Minnetonka with a chance, a little crowded street, like, it's like they're on 494 there. The Dyna breaks out, and they are called for offside. That was a good back check by Minnetonka there, forcing uh, the Dyna team offsides. Some good pressure on the power play by Minnetonka. Uh, had a chance, a couple chances to score, but just came up a little short. Do you think at this stage of the hockey game, the kids, the nerves of the, if they're pretty much into the game, the nerves are kind of gone by now? I think they do settle in by, by now. The, maybe the first five minutes of the game, you can explain the, the nerves before everybody gets one or two shifts under their belt. And after that, it's a game of read and react and, and, and just go out there and, and, uh, and work hard and do the best you can. What's one thing you would tell kids at this age? What, have you coached at this level before? What's the most important thing that you tell kids? The most important thing is, is work as hard as you can, number one. Uh, another thing would be is control the puck. Don't give it away. So make a play, don't throw it away. Uh, because in every zone, you're just going to be better off with control of the puck. And as we've seen, with, on the penalty kill, you can't ice the puck anymore because USA Hockey wants to have players develop skills and not throw pucks 200 feet at this age. And so, control the puck, work as hard as you can. You know, try to be a good teammate by communicating and talking to your teammates and getting into the habit of calling for pucks and telling players where they need to be defensively. And, um, but keeping it simple, work hard, communicate, and control the puck. And have some fun. Have some fun. It's a wonderful right. game. You play, like, you play like that, it's fun. It's a fun oh, yeah. game. <laughs> Four on one. And Minnetonka. Kennedy came out with a puck. Hornets are swarming. Them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty tight checking game here in the second period. 844 left to go in period two, no score. Minnetonka trying to get it out of the zone. The good thing from our vantage point, everything's right in front of us. Yeah, well up here, up here on the rail at the Pagel 2 Center is a great, great viewing spot for anybody, especially when we're calling the game. Yeah, that's a beautiful, nice arena. It's been around for what, a year and a half or two years? This one, yeah, it's, 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 we're in our first season. It actually opened up last, last June 10th was opening day. And uh, it seemed like it was in the planning phases for about 10 years. But <laughs> we finally got the arena built and it's been a, a great, second home here for our uh, youth and our high school program. It is, it is good that it's essentially on campus. So we don't have to worry about bus rides to outside arenas like a lot of teams have to do. It's yeah, no, nice that everything's right here. The high school kids are very, very fortunate in Minnetonka. The boys and girls, varsity and JVs can walk over after school and practice and not have to drive over to Minnetonka A or B rank over uh, for 494 Minnetonka Boulevard anymore. So it's been really a really a great addition to the community. Kennedy, Larson, Russell line out for Minnetonka. Uh, top on the right side by Oshwager goes a little bit wide to the right. Minnetonka trying to clear and a long pass. Breakout pass goes a little bit too far. And an icing call against Minnetonka. Face off all the way back with Minnetonka. Down to the ice with 7.36 left to go here in period number two. So who's your big rivalry? Or who's, who's your, from the girls' perspective, what's one team that you love, look forward to playing every year? Well, Edina is one of them. They, you know, they play a fast game of hockey and a lot of skill, and it's really a fun game to play in. Uh, Eden Prairie's a big rivalry. Uh, we have some others. Rozo and Warroad we play against every year, so we, we go up there every other year. And uh, we're lucky we have, a, we have a lot of teams, Stillwater, Roseville, some big high schools, Lakeville South, Lakeville North, that we get to play against and all have strong programs. Good opportunity for a minute talk along the side of the net, but Jones up to up for the task and kept it out of the net. Shot from the point to flex. Loose puck out in front, another save by Jones. And it's over. Somehow through that scrum, Minnetonka got a hold of it, put it in, they looked go like one Leo, looked, looked like Leo Boyan to me was the final one to touch the puck, but it, a few few guys banged at it in front. Luke Larson was involved in the play. And uh, it was originally a shot from the point, but Leo, Leo Boyan found himself right there on the side of the crease and pulled it in and fired it 
the back of the net. Well, that's kind of the type of goal that you kind of expect because it's a pretty tight checking game so far and just a loose puck in front of the net. Minotaur can cast in. Well, watching the warm-ups, both goaltenders are very strong on their angles and rebound control. And I think that both coaches have told their teams Whoa. to crash the net, to follow up on the rebounds. Tonka almost had another one. They're picking up the pace here a little bit. Kippers and Boyne and Criswell line getting, a, getting together for that last goal and putting on some extra pressure here in the last 30 seconds or so. And here they come again. Catching Edina, kind of standing around. Backhand shot by Kippers, just went wide. Then the puck slides out to center ice. Woodley fires it back into the Edina zone, but it was offside. Jackson noticed that the Edina players are forechecking, and in, in the second period, we have to have the long change. So when he passed the puck across the blue line, several of the Minnetonka players that were coming on the ice were actually coming on from the door that is offside. Puck slides back into the Minnetonka zone. Crawford with the puck, sends it around the board on the near side. Up to Larson, he's tied up in the corner. They're kicking and scratching, trying to get that puck out of the corner. Send it out in front, loose puck. And Minnetonka clears. Larson got it out the center. Minnetonka breaking out. Russell on the right wing. Send it out in front and shot just wide. Russell just missed. And a perfect centering pass from Larson. Yeah, Miles Kennedy was the player down the middle. Russell fed him with a nice saucer pass out front. Uh, with a great zone attack. Walk along the near boards to center ice. Rest with it for Edina, fires it in behind the net. The pace of play has picked up just a little bit here in the second period. It has. As much momentum Edina has had in the first period, Minnetonka's had it in the second period. Now the shots are even. Shot from the point. Uh, Palmer with a save. He had a, a number of saves. The shots on goal are evening up just a bit. Yeah, Minnetonka must have had uh, a good talk in between the first and second period, and it looks like Coach Woodley and his gang fired the boys up. As well as I know Michael? Yeah, that's probably what happened. <laughs> Shot from the point again. By well, they're, a, they're a passionate team, led oh, by yeah. a passionate oh, coach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and they, they have a lot of fun. And, and uh, they, they do tend to play better as the game goes on, as we're seeing here, but we know that uh, Edina is going to continue to put pressure on as well. So we're up for, for a what, great contest. Mr. Woodley, or Coach Woodley, is kind of old school guy from St. Paul. Minnetonka brings it back into the Edina zone. Fired back out to center ice. Stepped out uh, Crawford with it along the right wing board. Fires it in back in the Edina zone. 4.33 left to go here in the second period. And Minnetonka leading Edina one to nothing. Back out to the point, Woodley keeps it in. Controlled by Monica, fired in centering pass, is knocked down by Edina and brought out to center. Dellenberger along the near board, gets it into the Minnetonka's own Levi Roach. That big kid, Levi Roach, at it. Sends it across the ice. Back on the far boards in the Edina zone. There he is that old pesky, Levi Roach. As the coach has said, the guy's like a water bug. He's all over the place. <laughs> all the way back out, centered on the front. Loose puck, cleared out of the front. Boyne with the puck right on it, he lost it. Still in the Tonka zone. We're looking to clear it out. Uh-oh, we might have another icing. Hit a chunk of ice and stuff. Clearing, clearing pass is intercepted. Minotaur with the puck. Kippers with it, backhand shot. Missed, missed on that one. Udana breaks out. 
Across the blue line on the far wall. Jorsky with it. Tries to center it, knocked away by the Tonka defense and cleared down. Another the clearing play by Logan Warren that doesn't make it all the way down. It ends up being a nice chance for his team to change lines. It's kind of an art form just to make sure it doesn't go all he's got, the way. He's got the touch. Intercepted on the front and a shot just wide to the right. Miles yeah. Kennedy with a great effort. The tale of two cities or two periods so far. Edina had a little bit of the edge in the first period. Minnetonka has taken it here in the second. Behind the zone in the Edina, Edina zone. Yeah, and as it was in the first period, you know, it's it mostly it's the turnovers that one team makes to the other that actually creates the scoring chances that we've seen. And so. Uh, for the most part, the teams have been taking good care of the puck, but in the occasional turnover, we've seen some great scoring chances out front. Edina breaking it out, bringing it out his home. Or it's pronounced, I believe, ooh. Home with it, backhand shot. And a casual, good. Palmer with the save, it almost looked like, ah, this cake. On, on the break there, Dennis Baum. Boom, boom, boom. Well, you skated like a sonic boom there. <laughs> Not like uh, boom without the beat. That was that was that was Edina's greatest scoring chance of the period. Uh, Max Palmer made it look pretty easy with the glove save, but I don't think it was that easy of a save. No, he made it look like it was easy. Kind of an nonchalant, <laughs> dramatic. He's trying to calm his team down here. Oh yeah. Moves back out front. Park of the side of the net, Edina with another opportunity to come back and tie this one up. But it's uh, skipped through his legs. Face off will come in the Minnetonka zone with 127 left to go here in the second period. Well, the Hornet team is feisty and, and just how momentum can change. They've taken it right back this last uh, shift and a half. Doesn't, doesn't take much. No one does it. A couple of shots on net and the offensive team's getting fired up and the defensive team starts to show a little fear. Along the near boards, carrying it down the ice for Edina. Fires it in on goal. Saved there by Jones. Back behind the net. Witzke. Centers it out. Edina breaks out. Shot on goal. Palmer makes a save on a shot by Gress. Under a minute to go here, period number two. It's one nothing in favor of Minnetonka. It was a smart play at the late in the shift by Collins to come in and, and fire the puck on goal and hope for a rebound. They ended up getting a whistle and uh, could change and get fresh lines out. Nice to see when the cameraman wipes off the lens. <laughs> <laughs> Centering pass out in front. And Jones. Palmer makes another save. Palmer's been doing a great job controlling his rebounds this game. And uh, Vidina has been knocking on the doorstep, just not able to find a free puck because Max has been stingy. Shots at this point, almost through two periods, 18-9 in favor of Vidina. Unofficially. Collier keeps it in for Vidina. Fires it back into the right corner. Crawford has it. Gets it over to Kippers. They're still trying to clear the zone. Edina seals it. Centering pass out in front. And a roll right off the stick on number 14, Brayman. Had a great chance out in front, but a roll right up the stick. Under 10 seconds left to go here, second period. Centering pass, and Palmer with another save. This is keeping busy. 2.9 seconds left in the second period here, and Minnetonka's looking to get back uh, on the bench and listen to their coach fire him up for the third period because the last couple minutes, the Dinos had the momentum. Off the face off, shot just by. And that wraps up for period number two. Uh, Minnetonka leading it down one to nothing after two periods of play. All right, here we go for period number three. Both teams switch ends. Minnetonka leading one nothing. Shots on goal after two periods of play, 19-9 in favor of Edina. Shot on goal, and Jones with a save and a loose puck out front. Minnetonka still 
controlling the action so far since the uh, midpoint of the second period. Yeah, Kennedy trying to jam that puck home, and Jones did a nice job in front of the net, uh, making a pad save and covering the rebound. Off the faceoff, goes into the far corner on the Edina zone. Kept in by Woodley. Woodley with another chance, keeps it in the zone. Edina trying to gain control and get it out of the zone. Comes over to Warren on the near boards. Fired up along the boards. Woodley in his own zone. Back and forth. Lavelle with a puck. Fires it in toward goal. Saved by Palmer. Steers that into the corner. Woodley tries to clear it. And Minnetonka breaking out. We got a little player change. And here comes number 10, Russell. Fires and he's up. Oh, and it is goal. It's the first one we're off the pipe. Bounced back out and was put back in. Oh boy, like, Miles like Kennedy Ken was riding the scooter down the ice. He followed up the rebound nice. Ryder Russell made the play, coming down the right side, number 10, Russell. A favorite player is Zach Parisi for the Minnesota Wild. Came down the, the side just like Parisi, and he fired a short side shot off the near post. Kennedy followed up the rebound uh, for the garbage goal, and then he decided to ride the scooter down the ice. Hopefully the hockey gods aren't going to hurt him on that one, because it might have been a little bit too much freedom meditated celebration. <laughs> Hopefully it won't catch him in the end. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. And, and unfortunately for him, this is on video and he can watch that with a <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> He's a sneaky player, but he rides his stick pretty well. He, he rides his stick pretty well. He dying up behind the net, Minnetonka net, back out to the point. He fell down and out comes number 44, Benedict, and he tripped and falls, had a chance for a breakaway. Oschlager for Edina. A couple of Minnetonka players collide. Oschlager with an empty move there. Shot on goal. Saved by Palmer. Edina controlling back out at center ice. The fever with it. Puts on a couple of moves as Edina changes on the fly. The fever still with the puck over in the left corner. In the Tonka zone. Circles around. Comes out in front. Shot. Saved by Palmer. I think the momentum could be shifting. Minute Minnetonka minute clearing out the zone. A little bit too complacent with a 2 0 lead. Stepped in by Minnetonka. Rolls around on the far end. That's Benedict over there. The key moment in the game, Marty, with a two-goal lead, Minnetonka gets the next one, and they've got this game really strongly in their grip. If, they, if Medina gets the next one, then they're going to have all the momentum moving forward. I think that's why the two-goal lead, they say, is the toughest the lead in hockey. I'd prefer to have a two-goal lead over a one-goal lead myself. But. Keep you on your toes or your skates. But, but yeah, if you keep working hard, that's the key. Medina tries a long clearing pass, breaking out. Erickson, and he's taken down on the play. No penalty call. Minnetonka, a couple of players collide. Edina controls. Oschlager out in front. Saved by Palmer. Still 2-0 in favor of Minnetonka. Back out to the point. Shot by, by the Hornets. Rings the board. They toss it in behind the net. Erickson had it. Smart play by Riley Erickson to find a seam up the middle of the ice by the far blue line and created a breakaway chance for himself. Minnetonka might have got away with one there by not getting a penalty call on the play. Play out at center ice. Took there on Molman across the level. Kennedy with it for Minnetonka. He had it checked off his stick. Brayman with it. Big hit along the near boards. Both players are going to go, getting very physical. That's going to be Logan Warren for Minnetonka and Riley Erickson for Edina are going to go to the box. And not play. Sinbin. Two players for roughing, uh, both trying to do whatever they can to compete for their team. 
7.47 left to go here in period number three. Minnetonka leading 2 0 over Edina. It's going to be five on five since the penalties are coincidental. And Eric, just to let you know, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> I never wear them anyway. The, the what? My glasses. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I would never know. I, you've got all the I names, never, right? I never wear them. <laughs> I never wear them. I just refuse to wear glasses. But I can I, see I, okay. I've got cheaters, but I don't have them with me. Oh. Long story, we'll get into that some other day. <laughs> you can tell that Edina has won a, a lot of hockey games. Ten games already in the district. Um, you can tell they, have, they find a way to to win games. Right now, they're doing a great job putting pressure on Minnetonka. Max Palmer's been standing tall in the Tonka net. And uh, Minnetonka's just hoping to take care of the puck here in their own zone. And an important thing to note is that Edina has six defensemen. They're skating three lines and six D. Minnetonka's got three lines and two sets of D. Well, and then with this, toward with the end pace, of the period, it might be a key factor conditioning wise. That, that might be coming into play already. Russell sends it over across to Larson and off his stick, and I believe they called an offside on the play. 6.55 left to go here in the third period. Yeah, I know defensemen, you know, on most teams would prefer to play every other shift that they could, but when you have six defensemen in a fast paced game like this, it certainly is an advantage. And uh, we'll see how Minnetonka holds up with their four back there. Albrecht won the faceoff for Minnetonka back in the Dina zone. Collier has it behind his own net, being checked on the play. Picked up by Collins. He'll send it across the rink off of Minnetonka skate. And fired back into the Edina zone. At this point in the game, up 2 nothing, six, seven minutes. Basically the coaching philosophy, send one man in deep. Yeah, maybe you maybe could keep sending two, but uh, make sure the third forward is high so we don't give up any three on twos. We can come back. Even rushes. Looks like Minnetonka might have moved Leo Boyan back on defense here in the third period. So they might be running 5D and, and 8 forwards because he was playing forward here in the first and second. I think mean, really originally moved, was a defenseman. They moved him up and now they're moving back again. You know, I mean, not think, just tonight, but earlier in the season. You know, I, I think that, that all the players play at just about a third of the season at their non preferred position in Minnetonka for development. So they learn how to play everywhere on the ice. So Leo has played his share. But I believe he prefers forward. And he played the first two periods at forward tonight. Uh-oh. First down. Still shot on goal over the, I think that went off the knob of the stick of Palmer. He got to put a lot of pressure. We've got a delayed penalty coming up on Minnetonka. Minnetonka gets the call. 5.25 left to go. Important part of the game here. It's going to be an interference call against Ethan Criswell from Minnetonka. Uh, Minnetonka scrambling a bit. Edina with a lot of sustained pressure in the Tonka zone. Max Palmer did a great job of freezing a puck with the waffle or the blocker and, uh, and really stopped the scoring chance that was about to come out in front of his net. Big, big moment here for Edina. They, they definitely could need one to get one back in the game here. We're down 2 nothing with just 5.24 left to go. This is going to be, this will be a big moment. This next two minutes in the game, if Minnetonka can kill off Edina's power play, then they're getting very close to being able to finish this game off. And if Edina can capitalize, then they're going to have a lot of momentum here in the last couple minutes. A mad scramble out in front. One of the Minnetonka players trying to grab his stick that was behind the net. Oh. Level on the ice there, trying to keep it in the zone, but I think it came out just a couple inches, plus he was out on his, on his knees, and uh, that was a, a good offside to take. Evan Crawford for Minnetonka cleared that puck, and it just made it outside. Give his team a breath for a few seconds. He died on the power play, trailing 2-0. Lovell keeps it in the zone, gets it over to Brayman. Brayman's shot just a little bit wide to the right. Comes back out to the point. Mullman puts a nifty move on, takes a shot from there, deflects, goes into the far corner. 
Shot from the point, saved by Palmer. He steers it into the right corner. Collier tying up with a Minnetonka player. Both the power play and the penalty kill are both tired, but neither team wants to, to give up any positioning. Here comes Kipper, breaking out of the zone, shorthanded. Sends it out in front, shot, scores! Nice pass, Kippers to Kennedy. Number 15, Evan Kippers over to number nine, Miles Kennedy. Beautiful execution of the two on one. Oh yeah, and that goal, shorthanded. That's a backbreaker at this point in the game for Edina. And Minnetonka is fired up. Edina's still on the power play for another 22 seconds. Back out to the point, Bowman fires it back in. Warren sends it around the boards. Two seconds left in the power play for Edina. That's wipes that out. Both teams at even strength. 320 left to go in the hockey game. Kept in the zone by Minnetonka. Ridley has it on the far boards. Comes out to center, Warren with it. Lost the puck. Almost taken away by Twersky. Another That's soft one. touch by Logan Warren that doesn't quite make it all the way down, but it gives his team enough time the to science change lines. To that. He must be a good yep. uh, horseshoes and. Puck coming back into the uh, Minnetonka zone, and they're uh, going to get another penalty coming up on Minnetonka. Forty left to go, third period, three nothing in Benetonka, but he's in the power play, you never know. Logan Warren got the gate for interference or checking, one of the two. The, the coaches or associations at this level keep track, like in the NHL, of the penalty minute leaders or any, or is it more a team thing as opposed to individual? Well, I, I think it, I, I, I don't know if it gets tracked by the individuals. Each, each team gets a score sheet at the end of a game, so I suppose they could keep track of it. But it is more of a team thing. Teams want to minimize their penalties and get more fair play points with the district. Shot from Medina and Palmer with a save. Medina on the power play again, and Minnetonka clears it out to center. Molman has it stripped away from him. Schlager had the puck, gives it over to Mullman, crosses the blue line. First shot from there, it was scooped up by Palmer. And shots right now, 28 to 14 in favor of Edina, but more importantly, Minnetonka's up 3 nothing. Yeah, right now, Max Palmer is definitely the, the first star on his team. Whenever you get 28 shots and, and you're, you're stopping every one of them, um, you know, you're, you're the hero as a goalie. He's been doing a great job managing momentum by making a freeze and getting a whistle every time his team seems to need a change. Edina still on the power play. Under two minutes left to play. Shot by Edina, just goes wide to the right. Back behind the net. Come on, Edina! And the loose puck is covered up by Palmer. Nine or four? Uh, 124 20. left in the game, 45 seconds left on Warren's penalty. Uh, shots 29, Edina, 14, Minnetonka. Empty net for Edina. Last minute and 20. Ah. Pulling the goalie on the power play, six on four for the next 40 seconds or so. The favor. Crosses the line offside. Yeah, Minnetonka can ice the, well, they cannot ice the puck with the new rule, so if they send it all the way down past the goal line, it's going to be a whistle and an offensive zone face-off for Edina. 
Edina controls off the faceoff on the power play. Pulled goalie. Down 3 0. Under a minute left to play. Shot from the point. Blocked out in front. And Minnetonka breaks out. There is an open net. Backhand shot. Good play Tuttle. to clear the puck all the way down by number 13, Henry. Henry the Hanny, Hammer Tuttle. I suppose when somebody like uh, Mr. Woodley bumps into somebody and you turn around and want to challenge him and have to look up that tall because he's six foot one. Yeah, it is a, j a challenging thing to be that that big at this age. You know, Jackson was going uh, into the corner and, and both players angles sort of crossed and and uh, he, he knocked the player down about 15, 20 feet away from the boards. And the player slid into the boards and being so big and strong that he is, uh, it happens at times. And, and he's awfully careful because he knows how big and powerful that he is. Goalies pulled, two men short, six on three. You don't hear that very often. Well, Miles Kennedy's a very strong skating center. Now Minnetonka just got their fourth player back on the ice. Uh, shot and they score. There goes the shot. Just over 33 seconds left to go. Well, they say it ain't over until it's over. Medina finally gets on the board. They're down three to one. They're still on the power play. This, the goalie's still pulled, so now it's six on four. Dennis Boom. Dennis Boom with a shot. Yeah. Now it goes. I, know, I think Minnetonka is not realizing they're been, on the short-handed. I thought it should have been six on four, but it should be. We're playing with a five, and the refs are not yeah. saying anything about it. And neither of the other coaches. That's why you get, they get paid finish. the big bucks. That's right. <laughs> and maybe the, maybe the penalty did wave off as it's All not right, on the board anymore. Somebody just forgot to hit the delete so, button. The other penalty, I guess, it just expired when they scored. So nice nice shot block here by Miles. Under ten Kennedy. seconds to play. They tie up along the blue line. And that could pretty much do it. Great game here this evening. On a warmer night outside than it is inside. <laughs> that's for sure. That, that, that's for sure. Uh, great game by both teams. Both teams fought extremely hard. And, uh, and you could say that the play was overall maybe even, uh, even though the shots were 30 to 14 in Edina's favor. I think after Minnetonka got the lead, Edina kind of poured on more of the shots, and Max Palmer stood tall in his net. And Aiden Jones had a great game for Edina as well. And if you look at the stat sheets in the morning, it might tell a different story. But you know, the, like you said, uh, Palmer played great in goal, he did, and uh, Minnetonka just put put more pucks in the net. It's kind of a back and forth game, uh, but at this level, it's a, just a great hockey game. It was. You know, the first period, advantage Edina in shots and, and momentum, and. In the second period, it was it, it was Minnetonka that took over. You know, it was Edina in the first and Minnetonka in the second. Third period, you know, Edina was trying to catch up, and it was probably it, you know a little bit more uh, the puck was in the Minnetonka zone more, and Edina was putting a lot more pressure on trying to catch up. But but uh, back and forth hockey game, great District Six bout here at the Pegel Activity Center Rink Two. And it, it's you know from my experience and and being a love a lover of hockey in itself at any level. It's good to see the support on both both teams, uh, Edina and uh, Minnetonka, and all, and all the things that they do for the different programs. It's and uh, well, the one thing I always encourage anybody that's involved, whether it's hockey, basketball, baseball, whatever. And there's you know going over all my sheets and seeing all these guys, these kids that are play lacrosse and baseball and football. It's just you know have fun and hope the parents can be supportive and just you know it's a great experience. It's a team effort it builds a lot of skills for the future and. And that's that's probably why I'm out here. I don't know about you. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> well, it builds it, this this kind of game is great because it builds sportsmanship. It's always been a big rivalry, Minnetonka and Edina. Both coaches uh, know you know the staffs know each other. Wanted to make this game special for the kids and wanted to have some videotaping, some color commentary, and and then there's this Anchor B trophy that is a traveling tro trophy like the axe that Minnesota has with, with Wisconsin. Have we seen that? <laughs> I don't know if we've seen it in a long time. We see it, but it's only here for a visit. <laughs> So the Anchor B trophy is half green and half blue, and yep. on one side it's Tonka theme, the other side Edina theme, and right now Edina's going to um, give it, well, I guess Minnetonka's going to have it for a little while until they have until to play year. again. Until next year. Well, no, but, I'm not sure whose basement it's going to sit on or whose mantle it will be on. but Yeah, maybe Max Palmer's, maybe Coach, Coach Woodley's. Who knows, maybe it'll be a traveling trophy around the team. 
But Mr. Woodley told me that he kind of created it out of some cleaning out the garage and hey, a trophy. I'll make a I'll make a trophy out of it. Made that three four years ago, so, which is which is a good story in the background. But you know, that's all part of the fun. It is part of the fun. It is it's just a game, and they're making a, a really fun contest and trophy out of it. And and uh, it's it's really fun to have that sportsmanship. Well, we, uh, it was a pleasure to bring in this game here tonight. Uh, I'm an Indiana guy. He's a Minnetonka guy. But we're unbiased. I <laughs> uh, just want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, final score once again, Minnetonka 3, Edina 1. Eric, thank you very much. Thank you, Marty. It's been a pleasure.